Good morning or afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the great big book club, ladies. Uh, first of all, I just want to say how incredibly thrilled I am to have you both. You are our first chat. You're the first that. people to do this. Uh, the idea is we bring like-minded people together who have got something in common or something similar to talk about. Uh, and also, obviously, Ruby, you've got a book out, so we're going to talk to you about that. So Ruby Wax, OBE, actress, comedian, lecturer, and author of four books, two number one bestsellers, is well known as a mental health campaigner with a master's degree in cognitive therapy from Oxford University. Please meet BBC radio presenter, Strictly Come Dancing host, and CEO of Fake Town, Claudia Winkleman, who is also, I might add, queen of podcasts with her mental health podcast, How Did We Get Here with Tanya, Dr. Tanya Byron, and also has a master's degree but from Cambridge University. Ladies, welcome. Thank you so much for having us. I'm, Ruby, it's so lovely to chat to you. Before we begin, can I also just say, I think this is a lovely thing that you've created, Imogen, because people are in lockdown, they, and they can come on. I, don't, I mean, I'm a tech moron, I'm 910, but they can find us and watch us chat. Yes, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because, yeah. Yeah, because that's what pe people are hungry for. You know, they want to chat, so we're doing it for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Ruby, I loved talking to you because you know I was completely in love with your book, How to Be Human, which we'll talk about. But I, how are you coping with lockdown? Well, um, I've, in the beginning, I was cleaning like a maniac. You know, I, the inside of my fridge has been clean many the ceiling has been cleaned i'm even starting on the sidewalk now outside it's mania but um i realized that that's what was going on before this lockdown do you know what i mean there's a lot of insight into this is that keeping busy so you'd never have to look at the demons so yeah what about you no but that's what i found so fascinating in your book because i well, can claudia can I can I ask something? Is Anything. this a conversation back and forth? Do I ask Claudia or is this an interview? Because I, I don't no, know. No, I'm interviewing. I've got nothing interesting to say. Oh, no, I would I ask you. Back. All right. No, we'll I love you. you. I've, got, I've right. genuinely got nothing. In, but what I absolutely loved about your book was people's obsession with being busy. Because I don't like being busy. I have two naps a day. I'm very happy to say I do absolutely nothing. And you were just talking about, it's almost like a disease that we're all like, no, can't talk, can't run, that you'll reply to spam email and it totally... I answer spam at four in the morning, yeah. So I, like, I should reply to that because there's an offer on. I should just say whether I'm going to be interested or not. And the idea, nobody's busy now. Do you think this is, do you think this is, might be good for us? Uh, you know, for the people that were addicted to busyness, it's like coming off of heroin. Um, so uh, gradually, gradually, if they have any insight, they'll realize, wait, maybe I should have been spending this time to find out what I really wanted, you know, when I grew up, because we all put it off, like someday I'm going to go to an ashram or when. So now a lot of people are facing the music and saying, how do I want to live the rest of my life? Because now's the time. You've got nothing else to do. You might as well think about the important stuff. But that's kind of painful. So I'm with them, you know, I stay busy too, but then I try to do, you know, I do my frazzle cafe so that I feel that I'm giving something, you know what I mean? That I'm not just cleaning my house endlessly. So um, I, I love the idea. Cafe. I want to come and lick that ceiling. It does look incredibly clean. Tell us about the frazzle cafe. Say one thing. I, I was wiping a spot. I was obsessed because it was yellow and I wiped it for an hour and then I found out it was a beam of sunlight. Okay, I'm moving on. I love you. No, listen, and everybody has to find their thing because we're at home, you know, you've got to find your thing and yours is uh, cleaning up sunshine, which I like. Um, tell me about the Frazzled Cafe. Well, so this was in actuality, it was up and down the country for three years yeah. in real cafes, mostly Marks and Spencers. And I always wanted a group to call my own and I didn't, I auditioned for AA, but I'm not an alcoholic. So I created this, this uh, group where like-minded people, meaning they're not mentally ill, they just are what everybody is, frazzled, which means stress about stress. I mean, we're supposed to have stress, but oh my God, maybe nobody else is stressed. How come he didn't call me back? Maybe because, you know, this constant dialogue is a new phenomenon. So in frazzled, it's people like us, and they're all ages, and there's 12 of them, and they meet every two weeks, and it becomes their lifeline. Uh, I, Fantastic. I and I used to go and it was like, I don't know, 
it was pro I don't know, it was like when the community in the old days used to get together and everybody listened to everybody and, you know, cared. So funnily enough, on Zoom now, I do two a day and it's 100, type, 100 people each. The relief when they start to talk and nobody's, you know, self-indulgent, they just say, you know, I may, I feel I'm in the country. It's really nice here, but I feel guilty. Or, you know, I've always, some people do have depression, you know, I'm used to this. And now the world's coming to me. I used to have to try and come into the world or uh, there was a, uh, somebody with agoraphobia and she said, you know, I've seen a shrink all these years and, and, she, and now I know I was right. <laughs> how, I mean, they're wonderful. But how extraordinary. And you do two a day and afterwards are you left sort of going, whoo. No, or I'm left kind of at peace because I was with my people and yeah. they're glorious. You know, there's no cocktail bullshit. You know, how are your kids? Like I give a shit. You know, yeah. life is kind of getting shallow there. I, and we're funny when we're funny, but now we're going to have groups of 12 meet with facilitators. So we can do smaller groups too. So I'm asking for people to write in if they want to volunteer. And we, I want this to be all over because we got nothing else. We're I think it's an actually brilliant idea. You talked about a new phenomenon, which is, yeah, where are you going on holiday? Oh, you found a lip style you like. I mean, that not, I've always hated that noise. I can't I mean, stand either. a cocktail party. Background music, but not all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So here you actually get, you get to the nub. You get to the nub and it's a safe place to say the nub, you know? Yeah, so totally. Sometimes people don't even know what they're going to say and suddenly, you know, it comes out. But it's not indulgent. You know, they have a few minutes. Then they meet in breakout rooms so they get to know each other. And that's where the relationship happens. It's this like our coffee breaks. Anyway, that's frazzled. It's brilliant. And if anybody hasn't read How to Be Human, I want to talk about that first, then we'll talk about the new book. Uh, they should. I assume, I mean, it was brilliantly reviewed. If anybody doesn't know about it, can we explain the premise? Because it was you, I mean, I'd already I love it. You, a monk and a neuroscientist, just working out what it is to be human. And it's so beautifully written because okay. if you described it and it wasn't you, people would go, what are you talking about? Well, we get up, we brush our teeth, we look in the fridge, we move on. It's not that. It's no. piercing in its thank you. In its brains. Did you always how did you find these people? You know, I've I'm lucky. I mean, I don't I walked into uh I went to a conference and met the monk. He's English. His mother was a famous comedian. He went to Oxford, you know, he's well educated. He uh he's hilarious. And the night I met him, I said, I've never done, would you come and live in my house? Because I wanted, it's like having a, um, a smudge stick. Yeah. It's funny. So he lived, he's been upstairs for three years. He's not here now. But, um, you know, between a monk who understands the mind and a neuroscientist who's A, good looking, but don't tell So good looking. Him. And uh, so good looking. And young and was a professor at Yale and, you know, the thing. And we all have been traveling the world. And it's like having two of the best girlfriends. I, you know, any question you want, you go, how do we, they can't answer everything, but you know, how come I have all these thoughts? Where do they come from? What does a thought look like? The monk then says, what happens in the mind? I mean, these dialogues, trialogues were, I've been happy. Amazing. And, but, and then they toured with me. We did shows. I, I love the fact, wasn't the, didn't the monk get slightly precious? It was a bit like, sorry, why am I in row 56 center? <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> the monk started to go, <laughs> he hates me saying it. Yeah, he was very, he got a little show business, you know, and yeah, and I always made it, I said he demanded his own private hairstylist and he was bald. <laughs> so funny. They do answer a lot of questions though. And well, so I write the comedy in the book and then at the end of each chapter, we rap about it. So we talk about, you know, what to do, the questions I had, like how, what do you do with a kid? What are relationships? How do you choose the guy you choose? How come, you know, are we at the mercy of our hormones? Well, we are, Blanche. That's a relief. So you yeah. can make a terrible mistake depending on when you're having your period. Now, who knew that? And then different stages when you get, you know, we always think, do we change when we get older? I mean, we know we have puberty, but what happens at 50? And it's very clear. You can't, the whole premise is, it's not your condition, it's the human condition. Yeah. You know, we are not our fault. There's glitches, you know, that we, we aren't, just because we're homo sapien doesn't mean we got it right. We weren't no. supposed to 
about. We weren't supposed to give birth like this. You know, it, uh, we have a, a brain that's left over from, you know, when we began, and then another one grew 200,000 years ago. So they're always in arguments. There's a reptilian part, and that's why we watch horror shows called the news. And then there's a more compassionate part, but they can't make peace. So um, I always say that's, we have these different time span brain so that's why they're women i say this in the show women who like to read heidegger but also want to screw the plumber <laughs> <laughs> that's us um but and, and you know we think we're crazy but that's the way we're built and and another thing is we don't this is still a caveman brain and it doesn't realize the wallpaper's changed yes so we're we're we weren't built to know what's happening twenty thousand miles away we can't focus on it. We didn't know the world was changing because we only know danger when it's behind us. So all this oncoming tsunami, we didn't see it coming. But I loved it. I, th I can't remember whether you told me or I might have um, watched one of your talks where you said, we, A, it's a relief to know we're not getting it right. So anybody who's just like, I feel, weird. I feel slightly wobbly, don't worry about it. That's you're supposed to, if you feel that you're got it, you're sus, then you should run for president. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Um, and also, I think you said in all your tours, you've never met anyone who said, do you know what? Everything, I, I'm smashing this life. Yeah. I, a couple times I have, but oh. I'll move away from the, you know, move away yeah. from the building. Run there's for people, life. Yeah. There's some people, you know, they live in thatched roofs and they make muffins. Let's leave them alone. I, you know, but then don't read the book. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it, muffins. They were screwed. It's just how we're built. You know, you don't get angry at your car because it breaks down. You just didn't have the mechanics right. Yeah, so. but that's exactly right. But also, I love the fact that you said, look, if my next door neighbor is sleeping with somebody from across the street, then I'm interested. Five doors down, not really my business. Not my business. We can't, we can only take in so much. That's why we, before this virus, we were not, we weren't home. No, people were torn apart. People were frazzled before this, and now uh, they might have time to unfrazzle. Who knows? It, ironically, absolutely, yeah. because it takes isolation to get insight. Funnily enough, well, also, and when you talk about mindfulness, at this time you have to be mindful. I mean, there's only so many got no choice. You've got no choice. So some some point you've got to get in there. Or some exercise, you know what I mean? It's like, you're not going to get a six pack with a sit up, you know, you, you, there are brain exercises. Some of them are bullshit. Did I say that? Some yeah. of them are, you know, there's always shysters in the wind, but you know, uh, Tai Chi mindfulness, if you do yoga correctly, they do brain scans. Now, if you have, you know, you can see in the brain, what's, what's getting denser. And that indicates whether you're, you have more focus whether you can get your cortisol down, they can see it in a scanner. You know, if maybe somebody has a scanner at home. So it's science now. This isn't woo woo anymore. Yeah. So people are trying to sell their shtick, like there was always snake oil. But yeah. if you go to people that went to university or they studied the thing and they're not, um, you know, finding your aura, but a lot of, you know, we're humans. It's 2020. People still are buying books about hugging your inner elf. Yeah. I can't help people. You know what I mean? T go read The Secret. Yeah. yeah. The ancient Babylonians wrote it. Out. And that's why they've survived. There's so many Babylonians running around. Yeah, you're just completely correct. It must be. I wonder whether you find it alarming or you quite like, because obviously you do frazzled. But if I was in your life, if I was your husband or your daughter or your next son, all I would do is quiz you about my brain. Do you ever go, guys, I don't... I don't, I mean, I stand I don't know, no, but that's why you have, if you have a neuroscience on tap, because I get like, um, you know, tumors every day. So I call Ash and I describe my symptoms. <laughs> I've had cancer of the foot. And yeah. he, you know, there you have a doctor, a professor, and there you got a monk if you want to, you know, understand. I mean, all mindfulness is, is without going to school, understanding how the mind works. It's, again, it's not your fault. You know, it's how to deal with that income. It's not to clear your head. Your brain's clear when you're dead. It's to sort of live with those thoughts because yeah. again, it's a glitch. There's a reason, and we say what it is in the book, why you have more negative thoughts than positive, but you learn to live with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's and it's normal. You're never blanket. Yeah. Um, what do you think about phones? When you're 
now in isolation, do you sometimes, I mean, my husband, who I think might be, loses his phone all the time. He's like, oh, I don't know where I had it. Ah, I'll find it tomorrow. Do you do that or are you on it? No, Ed is, I married Ed so he could find my phone. Divine. That's his job, yeah. When I can't find it, I scream, Ed! It's like an animal sound. And it's like Pavlo. He knows to find the phone. By the way, I would, there's nothing that would make me howl more than if suddenly he burst into the room going, baby, here it is. But in terms of mindfulness, is the key not to check whether somebody has made a perfect breakfast or, you know, that whole compare and contrast and just being on, just looking at that light can't be good, right? That's what I tell my kids. Yeah, um, but I mean, if, the, 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 if you do all this stuff, which is human, like we're creatures of addiction. Yeah. So don't get mad that this is happening. And now, sorry, I mean, I'm not the first to tell you, the people uh, who are the engineers, they know how to get our dopamine going. Yeah. And they flash these, when, when, when I grew up, there were ads on the TV, but you could go get a chicken leg. Yeah. Now, don't blame yourself. They're so smart. They know how to like, I say, oh, I'm thinking of um, buying a pair of under, underpants, underpants, yeah. underpants. They know what you want. Yeah. And they know exactly how to wait for your craving to go down. And then they give you the drug, you know. Oh! You know that, that they know how to, they, they, yeah. they actually know how long it takes for that, address, you know, that dopamine to settle, which is the addiction drug, and then show it to you. So now you're buying more and more. But they, yeah. it's very- Or just fun. looking. I just don't even want to look. I love yeah. everybody, but I don't want to look. But the thing is, again, we're partly savage. So that's why we do look at horror. Like I go, I don't want to know the news. Please tell me the news. Yeah. Do you do that? Yes. What, I like, like the news. I I the news. Yeah. But again, being mindful, or that's such a crap word. It sounds like a dream catcher, can't, you know. Or, um, but just to notice, okay, I'm now starting to burn. You yes, know, we, yes. And saying, now I'm going to turn off the phone. It's not like I can do it, but I at least do the exercise to have the muscle. Yeah. you know, other people might not, that after my thousands of answer to spam, there might be, a, I might recognize a sensation that I'm not thinking clearly anymore or put yeah. the computer down. Yeah, or just, just walk away. Or, or walk away, but that's hard to do. If you're being mean to yourself, you're going, you jerk, you did it again. You're going to do it again. That's yeah. why people kept smoking. Yeah. If the ad said, you're going to die, you're going to kill your baby. So that makes you nervous. But yeah. you learn to go, it's okay, it's okay, it's a human condition. Don't, you know, you're, you're stroking yourself. And so the, you can have depression, but you don't get depression about depression. Yeah. You know. Picture! Gesundheit. Picture! Sorry. Gesundheit. I promise you I'm fine. So I'm healthy. Ah! Can we talk yeah. about, yeah. I want to talk about the new book. Because already the title, number one, hold up. Hold up How to Be Human, please. Oh, I don't have how to be human. Fine. Should I go get it? No, but I, I do what's coming out at the end of the month. It's been republished, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. A long time ago. You've done a different it's forward. Called, how, it's called, which one do you like? It's I called, um, How Do You Want Me? That, that I, was a huge bestseller. It what, wasn't when it, when it came when out. When did it come out? 2000 and... Two, I don't know. But I it was 2003. A, it was a bit, it wasn't, they, they thought it was a celebrity book. It wasn't. I mean, it was a dark, like it, my editor was Carrie Fisher. And she said, your family's as bad, almost as bad as mine. Now, if I had changed my name to somebody else, and you would have thought it was the corrections because my yeah. parents, here's my dad um, was a casing man. And so yes. he drove around in the wiener wagon. I love the fact, where did you go? Chicago. Oh, that's when I was still normal. Good fringe. This is my mother cleaning the snow. Hello. Oh she, my gosh. She had an obsession. She really used to go around with Q-tips to clean the ceiling. And you yeah. ran away. I ran away because they were so, um, they were nuts, but they gave me great lines, which I put in the book. Yeah. Great lines. Yeah. So that book is out. People, everybody needs to read that. And tell me the one I'm it's reading. coming out at the end of April. So there you go. And out in September. And I love, this is the best title I've ever heard. And now for the good news. <laughs> How did I get that one right? Good news. Yeah. It's a brilliant title. Tell us all about it. I talk, Well, it's called, and now for the good news, to the future with love. And then I sign it. 
well, two years ago, you know, I wanted to change my life because, you know, we have to reinvent because we live so long. You know, you're going to have to jump. Up. Yeah, you're going to jump that cliff soon. Not now. You have oh, no, I'm here. Years. Please. Yeah. Well, there's a moment where, if you're honest, you're, you're, you've got different cells. Your job starts to, you lose totally. your mojo. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, except the reason I jumped was because I got really ill. And then Comic Relief put up that poster that said one in four people have mental illness. One in five people have dandruff. I have both. That's the only reason I wrote that I was mentally ill. Who knew a career would come out of it? Anyway, so two years ago, I wanted to change my life again. So I was looking for stuff where, the, let me call it the green shoots were growing, where it would be the next, it, it exists now, but they're rethinking, they were already reshuffling how they wanted to live. So for example, in, in education, in Finland, where I went, they have a whole different way where these kids work together. They don't need Nobel Prize winners or hedge fund managers, but people are real happy and they're safe. And funnily enough, those kids understand critical thinking because the whole thing is everybody questions. And the whole thing is if the kid, one kid doesn't do that well, the kids that do really want him to match up. Yes. And they have that in this country too, where they teach emotional intelligence. So the kids learn how to control their cortisol. They don't burn out. And how some of extraordinary, them, how? There's different tools they teach okay. these kids. Like, and this is in the disadvantaged neighborhoods. This isn't called reach to the government pay for it. They're disadvantaged. The parents are really far gone. And the kids, you can see that they would ne be the next sociopaths. Yeah. But they're slightly, they're trained all day to recognize when they go to burnout. So for example, if they're about to take an exam and they feel that red mist, another yeah. kid won't notice it. They go in a corner, there's colors like red, yellow green they say oh i'm red okay then they have either breathing balls or they have a jar that they shake which when the glitter comes down they identify with it and their mind settles they have different things and when they know they're green the teacher talks to them and they go back to taking the exam How extraordinary! And, and there's hundreds of little games that they play they you know say to each other i'm really glad you're here because one kid said to me because you're here they didn't know who i was I, I don't cry, but I had to walk around like a, you know, like this. Yeah. How yeah. absolutely amazing. But also just to learn those tools when you're young and not and have to wait till your 20s going, why is this making me feel like this? Or and there, there are not going to be jobs that are, exist now. So people with emotional intelligence will go to Harvard. Yeah. Know, and, but, um, and then, so I did the same in tech, in business. What's coming is really interesting. And... Um, in community and in health. So it's stuff, it's the big boys that are doing stuff now. This is an alternative. And so I chose where I want to live, who I want to be around, what movements I want to join. Because in my head, and this is just me, they're the real deal. They're yep. walking the talk. So I've made best friends. And I was going to, when the book was over, really start, you know, not changing completely, but moving. Yes. And then this happened. But the thing is, they're still there. So when this is over, I'm going. You're go and are we allowed to ask you where you're going? Well, it says at the end of the book. Okay, well then don't, absolutely don't tell me. I mean, there are communities out there, forget the hippie thing, that are reinventing the wheel. Yeah. And businesses, it's called conscious capitalism that are, and these are big companies, that are um, breaking down that system of control and command yeah. and working as groups. And they make billions. Don't think, you know, this is some alternative. Of course, but how, this sounds, I'm not, I promise you I'm not just saying it because we're on a Zoom chat with Imi. This is fascinating. Well, it's been for me. Imagine the people I got to meet. I can't even imagine. So, I mean, I went to, Pat, you know, there's a sportswear company called Patagonia. Yeah. That's where you find a husband. They've been going 40 years and their advertisement is, please don't buy any more of our clothes. Any anytime it wears out, which it doesn't, you send it back, they fix it and they send it back. Everybody works in a charity, so they let you leave work and off you go to Guatemala or you work for the community. And 10% of everything goes back. They've been doing this for 40 years and they're all kind of cowboys, you know, like really yeah. sexy ones that look like Ooh. a shepherd. And their surfboards lined up because you're on the coast. And so they'll leave work. But this works. They made a fortune. I, we should only wear clothes from them. Patagonia. Nothing else. That's what we're doing. Yeah. 
yeah, pretty sexy. Um, how wonderful. So you have written that. So now you are, you're free or are you, are you working in lockdown? You're doing frazzled, but are, do, do you worry about... I, I, I handed in the book like two weeks ago. Luckily, I was, well, I would have been nice to write because that's another distractor, but I really traveled the world to find these people. Yeah. You know, communities in Africa and in favelas and that are, and some are spectacular neighborhoods and the people are quite cool. I cannot, why do we have to wait till September? Look, Imogen and I are very friendly. They print it now. You know, there's people that Fair print enough. it. Yeah. Fair enough. I just like it in an email. Uh, Ruby, thank you so much for talking. Oh God, Ruby, thank Ruby you. Just, just, before, just before we go, can I just ask you a question? Um, because you did liken, by the way, Claudia, that was a great interview. Thank, yeah, thank you. you yeah. What an interview. Uh, um, you yeah. did liken um, writing books to being dilated uh, in, in giving birth, being dilated for, for 12 months, which sounds incredibly painful, to be honest. Um, but, you, but you seem to have been so incredibly prolific. How do you, do you have a, a routine? Or how do you do it? Or is it random? Or do you actually sit down? Well, so I'm know? not writing fiction, right? So, I'm gonna, so I get to go to, you know, um, these places. Yeah. And I review them. So yeah. it's still having a baby, because if it doesn't get in the you know if it doesn't do well you're devastated but, but I'm I'm a, it's it's non-fiction yeah but, so but, but, but still so you're, are you are you sitting at your desk I mean what's your routine do you actually have a routine do you sit there and go okay I'm doing nine to five today or or uh... no I, I do it on the train when I was oh. touring a show oh, okay. so movement really is good but not sitting at home Right, right. So, you, so you're somebody in a cafe. Yeah, I'll find you in a cafe, will I, or on a train? Yeah, that's okay. where I am. Okay, okay. I can't write like that. I just have to sit. Absolutely. Do you do, do, do fiction? Yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and now people want. You know, the last one was science. You, you can't lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what I mean, because yeah. it's a competition. Who's making it funny? <laughs> um, I've loved this chat, Ruby. Thank you. I, I cannot it. wait. I'm going to talk to you in September, wherever you are, once I have read this book. You promise.